Joining me now is Minister for Home Affairs, Peter Dutton. Minister, thank you for joining us. Good morning to you. So, how, mu how much teeth does this legislation have and who's in the firing line? Well, it's a significant change. Uh, we're talking about mandatory sentencing here for people that have committed serious offences against children. So, the government's taken a very strong stance in relation to doing whatever we can, passport cancellations, making sure that we're working with our financial agencies uh, to attack pedophiles wherever possible. We want to make sure that we support children in our society because, uh, as Christian Porter points out, one in three serious sexual offenders who have perpetrated crimes against children uh, not getting one day in jail is unacceptable. And you've got children in that circumstance who end up with life sentences. So we want to make sure that uh, we do uh, toughen that area of law up. Secondly, we also want to make sure that there's a presumption against bail in relation in particular to repeat offenders. I think that's a really important point because many of these people will go out and commit further offences against other children. And we've done a lot of work, as you point out in your opening remarks, with the financial agencies because one of the most insidious behaviours of pedophiles is now, given the encryption and the use of online uh, platforms, they can pay per view for children being sexually abused. And it's uh, reprehensible and we want to make sure that we get this legislation into the parliament next week so it can be debated and I hope that uh, all the parties can support it through the Senate. How would it apply to international offenders in areas that are outside of Australia's jurisdiction? Well, Australian laws obviously uh, apply to Australian citizens and if there is uh, an extraterritorial uh, capacity to capture somebody that's committed an offence uh, offshore against uh, an Australian citizen and it becomes more complicated when you're talking about online activity, whether the children being abused are somewhere in the Philippines, for example, or here in Australia, uh, there are ways in which those offenders can be captured as well. Uh, but uh, we, we believe that people who come before the Australian courts uh, not to spend one day in jail for having sexually assaulted a child is completely unacceptable. In many cases, we're talking about sentences that are as low as six months. And, again, that doesn't reflect community expectations. So the whole idea here uh, is to send a very clear message to the courts, to offenders, uh, that community expectation must be met. And I believe that uh, the vast majority of Australians would support the government in these changes. The, the, the vast majority or the majority uh, of child sex offences are state crimes. So does this bill, would this bill have any effect on them? Well, we would hope that uh, the state jurisdictions who are responsible for their own laws uh, would look at some of the changes that we're making and perhaps be inclined to make the same changes. But that's an issue for uh, the premiers and for uh, other chief ministers to have a look at. But uh, we're certainly signalling at a, at a federal level, as we did in the last sitting week in Parliament, where I introduced laws uh, which make an offence for uh, dealing with the child sex doll and uh, the likeness now, the ability to... Uh, to create a sex doll uh, that has very similar attributes, obviously, to a child, uh, is, is just offensive at every level. And mm. so there, there are a number of ways in which we have introduced legislation uh, to tighten uh, the law up in relation to some of these circumstances. And one of the big things, Pete, that we're trying to deal with is the reality of online grooming. So young kids, uh, all of us with teenage kids experience this, whether on Snapchat or uh, Instagram, uh, sharing pictures... Uh, which end up in the hands of people that they don't know. Uh, it's every parent's worst nightmare that their child is groomed by a pedophile online. So we're tightening up uh, in, in that area of law as well. Well, some of the, the points um, th that you've made so far, I mean, you talk about, um, you know, bail, uh, well, bail not being applied or, or sentences being increased. There's no doubt that you, that you want to be getting tougher on this. But just for clarity, what happens in the instance of, say, an 18-year-old who sends a, a sex or sexts a picture to a 17-year-old girl. I mean, is, in that instance, is, is that person facing 40 years behind bars? No, no they're not. Uh, and, again, we're very conscious uh, of this because the reality is that uh, teenage kids uh, from much younger ages than that uh, will share images. And part of the messaging uh, consistently from governments at all levels has been, in particular, to parents... Uh, to the extent that we can influence our kids at that age uh, in terms of their online activity, uh, not to share those, those pictures. But uh, that, that's not what's in scope here. We're talking about repeat offenders, uh, people that are grooming children, uh, people that are sexually assaulting children, and 
uh, the worst sort of offenders because, as I say, the children end up with a life sentence. Uh, there are mental health issues uh, in many cases right through their lives. They find it difficult to form relationships, functional relationships later in life. Uh, and there's a lot of support around those individuals, but uh, we want to stamp out the activity in the first place and make sure that they don't go on to offend against the second, third, fourth, fiftieth victim. Uh, and that's um, what Christian Porter and I are trying to do by way of this legislation. So, I mean, you say that that's not in the scope. But where do you draw the line? I mean, is, 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 is there a seriousness of the, of the offence or is there an age? Where, where's the line there? There's, there's a seriousness, and in terms of uh, the distinction, as you point out before, uh, the federal offences as, as opposed to uh, the state offences, but on, on the facts as, as you put them, so an 18-year-old uh, and a 17-year-old exchanging a picture, that, that person doesn't come under scope of what we're proposing here. Uh, if there had been a series of uh, offending and a person was a repeat offender as an 18-year-old and they had groomed a dozen 16-year-olds and now the latest 17-year-old, 17, 17 well, that's a different scenario. Um, a minister, Labor didn't support it last time, saying uh, that it would be less likely to convict if they knew... Well, juries would be less likely to convict if they knew judges had no discretion on sentencing. What sort of a say would judges have? Well, I, I don't understand the basis for that comment from Labor. Now, if they don't support mandatory sentencing uh, in relation to child sex offences, they should say so, because they've supported mandatory sentencing in other areas of the law in the past, and so I don't understand the, the, the inconsistency here. So uh, judges have the ability uh, to, uh, to direct juries, they have the ability to uh, work through a trial, obviously, to, uh, to work with both defence and prosecution to uh, adduce the evidence and, and allow the jury to decide. But in the end, guilt or innocence in our country uh, in a trial by jury is decided by the jury, and uh, we, we have a very as a Western democracy, uh, a very well-established process. So uh, I, I just don't understand where the evidence is uh, that a jury would be less inclined to find a conviction. Uh, Minister, I just want to talk about the timing um, of this legislation announcement today. Is it um, a deliberate pivot away from the conversation surrounding uh, the Tamil family debate at the moment? No, Pete, this is uh, Child Protection Week, so uh, we had factored in this announcement uh, some time ago and there'll be other activities during the course of the week that, uh, that I'll be involved in, no doubt other ministers uh, involved in as well, because it's been a very significant part of the work of the Home Affairs portfolio. We put $70 million into uh, the new Australian Centre to counter child exploitation. We've brought together uh, the best investigators within the Australian Federal Police to work with their state and international counterparts, uh, because it is one of the most insidious crime types. And uh, I, I pay tribute this week in particular to those investigators uh, that have to trawl through hundreds, thousands of hours worth of images of children being abused. It would be the worst policing work imaginable, uh, but also the work of uh, organisations like AUSTRAC uh, within the Home Affairs portfolio that are identifying people with suspicious transactions where, uh, as I say, this pay-per-view I think is one of the most insidious uh, crimes or activities that somebody could be involved in. There is, um, just on that Tamil family debate, is, is, has anything happened over the past couple of days that would lead you to change your mind at all? Well, I, I don't have to change uh, my mind because the, the, the matter is before the court uh, and I've made my, my judgement uh, in relation to this matter, given that this matter's gone on since 2012-13, uh, uh, when I've been a decision maker before. So. Uh, minister Coleman has done the same during his time as, uh, uh, as the Immigration Minister as well. So not a question of what my decision mm. would be. This is, a, this is a matter that's before the court at the moment. Uh, and obviously the courts have decided this now. Uh, there are seven different occasions. Uh, this matter's been through decision makers in the department, through the tribunal, through the Federal Magistrates Court, through the Federal Court, uh, through the High Court. And this family at every turn has been found not to be... Uh, the parents have been found not to be refugees. It's a tough case. Uh, it's a very emotional case, and, and I understand that. But uh, we have to make sure uh, that people abide by the umpire's decision here. And people can apply for visas offshore, uh, as anybody can. But we haven't allowed people to come by boat. I've not had a single person drown on my watch at sea, uh, and I'm not about to start now. I mean, there, there, there has been a lot of reporting today, and even yesterday for that matter, but the sections of the Labor Party have brought religion into the debate. I'm, I'm wondering what you think of that line of attack, especially against the Prime Minister. They're suggesting that for a religious man, he's not showing any compassion when it comes to this. 
I think that's more of a reflection on Christina Keneally and, and Joel Fitzgibbon, I'm sorry to say. Uh, Chris Bowen has called out uh, as being ridiculous that, uh, that they would make such statements and I, th I think the Australian public would condemn it as well. Uh, there are lots of distractions in this debate, but when you deal with the facts, uh, it's a difficult circumstance for the family, for the Biloela and other members within the community. Uh, but from my perspective, uh, I, I know the intelligence coming out of Sri Lanka. I understand uh, from having spoken to sailors and members of the ABF uh, what impact pulling half-eaten bodies of children out of the water had on them and still to this very day uh, has on many of those uh, sailors and, uh, and ABF officers. And we're not going to return back to that day. Last year we brought in 18,750 people through the migration program, one of the highest numbers in the world on a per capita basis of the numbers of people that we bring through the refugee program. But we're just not going to allow people uh, to game the system, uh, to not accept the court's decision. And, and as we've read in judgments before in relation to this uh, particular family, uh, the father has been back and forwards to to Sri Lanka, uh, to Qatar and elsewhere, uh, which is part of the reason for the judgment uh, in the case that, that they couldn't make out the claim uh, that by returning to Sri Lanka they would be in danger. All right. Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton, appreciate your time uh, and getting up early for us out of Perth this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks, Pete.